we have been very clear about where we stand on this, which is innocent civilian lives should not be intentionally targeted and that Israel must do more to protect innocent life in Gaza and innocent civilians in Gaza. Must do more? How much more? Who knows? If the current unknown number of Palestinian civilians killed is too many, how many is okay? Was 100,000 civilians in Tokyo too many? Was 74,000 civilians in Nagasaki too many? Was upwards of 25,000 civilians in Dresden too many? How about the estimated 10,000 American civilians killed by America and its allies in Mosul just a few years ago? That's Mosul, Iraq, in the fight against ISIS. Of course, one death, one innocent death, is too many. But this is war. War is hell. And the White House wants it both ways. They want to support Israel, and they want the support of those who want to destroy Israel. We've been saying that for a while now. Thus, the Democratic Civil War continues. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez called an American veto of the U.N. Security Council ceasefire resolution, quote, shameful. War requires moral clarity, good versus evil, which the Israel-Hamas battle is. The White House wants political cover. War is hell. The latest Hamas videos from inside Gaza show the terrorist group dressing as civilians to fire on Israelis. Hamas fighters wear civilian clothing, making it impossible for Israel to distinguish between them and the civilian population. They're also in areas that civilians left a long time ago. This, of course, is by design, so the Hamas Health Ministry, which is the numbers that are always quoted, can talk about civilian deaths, which they now claim to number 15,000. With us now, Lieutenant General Jerry Boykin, former Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence. Good to see you, General. Um, Good to as see always, you. you're, you're a military man. You heard the term too many, and we keep hearing that over and over again from the, from the White House and uh, from other members of the administration. Is too many a military term or a political one? No, that's a, that is purely a political term. I, I mean, it, it depends on which side uh, has set a, uh, a number and is willing to go by that. But in terms of uh, that being a, a military strategy or uh, a military uh, process, it, it is not. Um, there, there's this line from, from uh Vice President Harris, we've been very clear when you say that innocent civilians should not be intentionally targeted, um, and Israel must do more to protect innocent life. What I'm curious and what I, is interesting to me over the past few months where we keep hearing this very same thing, too many innocents, do more, shouldn't be targeted, I've yet to hear the administration say, well, we have this is exactly what we want the Israelis to do. We want them to do more of this or less of that or we're, we object to this tactic that the Israelis have used. And I'm wondering if that means that there really isn't anything to articulate and these statements should be viewed as political rhetoric rather than, I don't know, military directive. Yeah, so let's look, look at this for a second. Uh, is it a matter of numbers? Is it a matter of time fighting each other? What, what you know, where do you put your, your priorities there? And I will tell you that the Jews are going to win. They're going yeah. to drive out of there. They're going to win. They have no place to go. And that's what people have not accepted yet, especially some of our more liberal people in this country. But I will, I will say this. Um, as a nation, uh, we have got to stand up for Israel. And I don't agree that we need to give them everything they ask for, but we need to, we certainly need to be in consultation with them to be able to give them the things that will enable them and everything that they want, it's not necessarily going to enable them, but that's uh, that's my take on this. Yeah. To, to be fair, right, um, we've been pretty critical of the administration in terms of their rhetoric. We predicted a lot of this in terms of the hand-wringing over uh, civilian deaths and blaming Israel than, rather than blaming Hamas or Qatar or Iran um, for the deaths of what are innocent civilians um, inside Gaza. That's, all that said, Israel's dropped, I think, about 22,000 bombs. Most of those came from the United States. They were F-15 
Eagles and F-16 fighting Falcons dropping those bombs, all American-made weapons. We're continuing to replenish the Iron Dome. From a military perspective, um, is there anything more that we could be doing? Because it, it feels like the administration may be saying one thing and doing something very different, and that doing something is supporting Israel. Yes, there is very, very much so uh, things that they can do. The first one is get off of the Israelis' back about uh, what we're talking about right now, uh, because they, I believe, and time will tell, I believe they made a mistake by going into this uh, ceasefire and make no mistake, it was a ceasefire. And I think they made a mistake and, and America pushed them into that. And I think if there's something, if there's one thing that we can do, it is give them what they need to win, but don't hold them back, let them fight because this may be the biggest fight we've had in the Middle East. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.